Hi, everyone. Welcome to Forbes Talks. I'm Diane Brady, and I'm here with Carly Porterfield, who is my colleague on the Forbes News Desk. Carly, we're talking about Banksy, who had, I believe, eight pieces show up in Ukraine in the past week, and of course, is telling people to go shoplift at guests. We will get into that later. Who is Banksy? Well, that's kind of the million dollar question, Diane, is that Banksy's identity has never um, been confirmed. Um, Banksy kind of came out of Bristol in the UK a few decades ago. And since then, his art has just been kind of showed up everywhere in the world from UK, from Ukraine to Palestine. Um, but we still don't know. There's been some good evidence over the years that points to multiple individuals. So I think kind of the overarching thing that people believe about Banksy is now Banksy is actually a team that started with an individual. That, like the James Patterson of, of the art world, perhaps. I mean, how much money are these, you know, I don't we call them paintings, because they're not really paintings per se, but um, these sort of works of graffiti art, how, what's the most money that uh, they have earned? Well, last year, um, Bank, a Banksy piece set the record and sold for $25.4 million in an auction at Sotheby's. So um, some of his prints on them that come directly from the artist, they can sell for less than $10,000 and then obviously reach millions once you go to the higher levels of auctions. You know, so that raises the question for me in the Ukraine. You have these pieces show up that obviously are political statements. Uh, do you have to protect them? If they're multi-million dollar works, doesn't what's to stop somebody from going in and just lifting it? Um, that's a great question because there's nothing to stop it. That's actually happened several times in the past. People have unknowingly painted over his works. Um, he does have a few street art competitors who will cover up, cover them up sometimes. But a lot of the times, if people are able to, they have lifted the works or sometimes even the wall that the work is built on and then sold it on the second hand market. So. A little bit about the genesis of Banksy, because the, the fact that, that he or they have chosen to remain anonymous, how how unusual is that, first of all? It's certainly a great marketing ploy, because we're always, like, spotting Banksy, like, where's Waldo? But is it is it common? Or No, it's not common. Um, and it's actually, it's very uncommon for artists who typically like attention. That's um, kind of developing a brand as an artist is something that can make you a lot of money. Um, the official reason why Banksy says that they stay anonymous is because graffiti is illegal in the UK, but I think that it, it can be argued that going under a pseudonym actually helps the Banksy brand. It's kind of a cool, mysterious figure, and even though Banksy, I would say, is mainstream now, the anonymity helps Banksy's brand kind of keep the gritty street art kind of area that he started in. Is Do we, do we sense much about his or their politics based on the type of artwork that we see? I know there's... Um... The famous one on, on my son's T-shirt of, you know, somebody throwing a, you know, bouquet of roses. Uh, but what have you gleaned? Yeah, I think it's definitely safe to say that Banksy is definitely an anti-capitalist. We know that from the works of art, but also the fact that Banksy does not have any licensing agreements in place with any of the brands that you mentioned guests earlier that would be interested in using Banksy's work to sell products. Um, we don't really have an idea of how much Banksy is worth, but we know for sure that he, Banksy is not making as much money as they could be off of the art. The other thing is they've also made uh, numerous anti-war statements in their art. And um, you see Banksy's art makes statements about anti-pollution, about pollution and climate change as well. So I think we can definitely say that Banksy is on the uh, left, the left end of the side spectrum of the spectrum. Well, politics. Speaking of which, um, with guests, tell us a little more about that situation, because um, clearly whatever they did made uh, him quite angry. Right. So the guests in Regent Street, one of the um, main shopping centers in the UK in central London, um, used one of Banksy's artworks in a store display. Um, that apparently was done without Banksy's permission. And Banksy actually told his millions of followers online last week to um, encouraging them to shoplift from the store. Now, I actually reached out to the police, and they say that they have not received any increased calls about shoplifting from the store. So it seems like for now the employees are okay. But um, yeah, that's something that Banksy de definitely does not seem to take well to people using his their art to um, make money. Well, and and when you seeking permission from an, an you know anonymous character, how who is the point of contact with the world for this mm -hmm. person or consortium of graffiti artists? Mm -hmm. So Banksy does have a group that does that. It's called Pest Control. It's the only official way to contact Banksy. And that's the point of um, 
the only place that you can buy prints directly from Banksy. They come few and far between these days, but they also run their own authentication authentication service, which is fun. If you're going to buy Banksy from an auction house or something, they encourage you to check in with pest control. Um, and the name kind of goes with his little rat motif. So that's how they're controlling whether these rats are real or not. Well, I know we're talking about the commercial side of this, but you know, in reading some of the coverage out of Ukraine, it seems that this has been very inspirational to people. And um, I do want to capture that to some extent. I mean, is there been any sort of motif in, in the kind of work we're seeing out of the Ukraine or, you know, just the reaction this time? Because I think this is the most I've seen in one go in terms of a burst of artwork, isn't it? Right. One kind of theme I've noticed in the work popping up in Ukraine is it tends to show people kind of doing everyday activities, but, you know, they're on the side of a bombed out building, which if we want to speculate, I think we could speculate that Banksy is kind of talking about Ukrainian people who are still there going about their daily lives in the midst of this war. And I think that that's definitely what the people there are kind of taking it as. Um, Reuters did a story where they spoke to people who lived around a picture of a girl taking a bath that was done on the side of a bombed out building. And they kind of related it to how strong Ukrainians are. They're like, you know, we're in the middle of the war. We don't have hot water, but we're still going to go about our day and, you know, kind of survive. Art is a creative force. I know he's done um, hotels. We've got the the wall, I suppose, uh, with between, you know, Palestine, Israel. You know, I, I know that there have been some philanthropic, you know, activities. Anything else in terms of how the expansion of, of the Banksy brand? It does seem it's guarded pretty, pretty carefully. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is really the fascinating thing about Banksy is Banksy could make so much more money than Banksy is making, and they just choose not to. I think they'd rather... Um, Really, the one interesting thing that Pest Control puts clear on their website is that if you want to use Banksy's art, if you want to print it out, put it up on your wall, that's fine. The only thing that Banksy really stands against is um, the commercialization of their images. So I think that's really something that they're sticking to these kind of anti-capitalist values when they they could make tons of money. Well, and uh, I guess guests be warned and um, hopefully no shoplifting there. Thanks for joining us, Carly. Mm -hmm. Thank you.